Welcome to the channel rather dubiously called Rufio. I'm the best Yugi tuber in my street, a very average player who uses this platform to trick you into thinking I'm good at and capable of playing Yu-Gi-Oh on any kind of level at all. Before we get started, why don't you hit subscribe for me, even if it's not because you secretly enjoy bad content, but because you pity me. I need every bit of help I can get. For today's video, I wanted to discuss Christron Halka Fibrax and how I feel we're effectively seeing the second coming of Nightmare Mermaid. Stay with me here. Let me give you some backstory. Last year, probably around this sort of time, virtually every deck that was a top deck, or competitively viable in some respect, was running the whole Nightmare Mermaid package, where any two monsters would lead to making Nightmare Mermaid, which would then allow you to go into a full August combo. This led to all kinds of toxic bullshit, even to the point that people were playing multiple two monster engines that would allow you to quickly get into two monsters on board and of course go off from there. We even saw the likes of Trickstars getting splashed in, which basically hadn't been a competitively relevant deck for a few months, just so they could abuse this engine. Nightmare Mermaid was eventually banned, and I think that we can all agree that this was for the best. The life was being sucked out of the game at the time, and rightfully, Konami dealt with the issue eventually. So let's do a little fast forward. We're now in Master Rule 5, it's now late May 2020, and we're potentially looking at the possibility of a new ban list coming in soon. We started off the format and Master Rule 5 in general with a huge degree of diversity. We're in this weird lockdown situation, but everyone has largely been hyped to try out all these old favourites, giving them a new lease of life, and try out tactics that simply didn't work before. We've seen the likes of Zoo doing well, which is insane to me. We've got brand new archetypes mixing things up, and the stale decks like Sky Striker and Orcus feel somewhat a distant memory, although that Salaman grade deck doesn't seem to want to budge. And things are flowing relatively freely. That was until a few weeks ago. In the last few weeks, we've seen all decks simmer down into this repeated pattern, much like we saw this time last year. Every deck seems to be aiming to get any tuner on board with any other monster to allow them to make Halka Fibrax and go on from there. It's no big secret that a single Jet Synchron and a Discard is allowing people to go about these massive lines of play, and even the likes of Nibiru don't seem to be stopping this from happening. The release of Halka Fibrax, Lincross, and Aurora Don should have seen a handful of potential things happen. We saw one approach, which was to ban problematic tuna monsters preemptively, which I'm somewhat in favour of. I know realistically the solution should be to hit the problem cards, which these tuners never were until now, but I do also believe that we should have all cards released to us for parity with the OCG, even if it means nuking a bunch of relatively fine cards, even if it's just to let us have a single format with a broken card, which we can later ban, and then we can release the innocent cards from the list. But this step of hitting these cards clearly did not go far enough. We still see the likes of Jet Synchron and O-Line being abused alongside these combos, which without them would be likely much more difficult and require significantly more resources. So why weren't they hit with the rest of them? What we are seeing now is the format shifted into this consistent bullshit Halka Fibrax turbo engine in every single deck. The fact that a Jet Synchron and a Discard gains you access to the full combo is beyond silly, netting you draws, negations, board presence and more. And none of this factors in other cards that you already have in hand, which in a deck like Adamantipators, which is 99% extenders, gets really insane really quickly. We have seen these oppressive go first boards before in recent memory, with Thunderguard, Dragon, Ass, Hattery, which to Konami's credit they addressed, but we should have seen what has become apparent coming from a mile away. They should have hit this where it hurts before it got out of control. So what do I expect to see next? Well, they either do a soft hit, which means taking out the token generators, which baffles me because they seem to hate these but keep producing them. They could hit the other tuners and let us run right with Halka Fibrax for another format. They could hit Halka Fibrax, which would solve the immediate issue, although potentially dampens the selling of product. And lastly, they could ignore the problem and let it continue, which risks damaging the competitive scene. The truth is, much like most people, I'm not really certain of how it's best to proceed. The most logical answer is to give Halka Fibrax the mermaid treatment. Maybe it's better to say that it's better to have loved and lost. My ultimate concern, though, is that lessons aren't being learned from this, and we end up having the same conversation again when Red Eyes Dark Dragoon debuts into the TCG. Let's hope I'm wrong for the sake of the future formats. 
Thank you for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed the garbage content I've put together for you. Enough to hit subscribe and maybe even drop a thumbs up and a comment. Before you go, be sure to check out the links in the description to help support the people who are making this channel a possibility. Thanks again for checking in and I'll see you in the next one.